Now let's consider our second practice problem. So in our second practice problem, we're considering developing a neural network for a bank to approve loans. Um, as we know, with every single neural network, it's always going to be comprised of input, layers, and output. And for each neuron that we have, so neurons typically will have weights, biases, and activation functions. Which will all be woven together with an optimization algorithm. And neural networks, when it comes to the training of the layers, typically have an input layer, one or more hidden layers, and we have our output layer. So when we consider this, let's go over our following steps and dive straight in. So step one, we typically have to design the input layer configuration. So we need to figure input layer configuration. The second part that we have, uh, first to designing the hidden layers. Third part is going to be choosing activation functions. Or choosing the activation function. And finally, we train the network. So the first part for the features. So just like in our spam detector uh, problem, uh, we initialize the input layer and each applicant's data point becomes a neuron's endpoint. So each applicant's data point becomes a neuron's input. We consider the features here. Then we, when we design the hidden layers, uh, we structure the hidden layer to uncover financial patterns that might indicate a risk or default. So we uncover patterns to discover hidden patterns of a financial default. And the collection here is tied with the range of financial behaviors and what we want to capture, so tied in with the features. of what we want to capture. When we choose an activation function, that means is that in the context of the bank scenario, we might prefer um, the uh, hyperbolic tangent activation function in our hidden layers for the centered range. So we would do the hyperbolic um, Ten H uh, activation function 
uh, in our hidden layers for the center range. Because hyperbolic, um, the hyperbolic tangent function uh, differs between sigmoid because it also leaves room uh, between uh, the center point to make a accurate prediction along with a positive and negative correlation as well. If need for the context, by all means, uh, feel free to go back to the activation uh, function section for the, um, for the course and garner further, uh, further understanding. And overall, uh, we can represent profiles efficiently, so we need to represent profiles efficiently. Then the fourth step is that we train the network. The bank's historical data trains the network, so we use historical data to train the network. Work, adjust weights and biases through iterations. Now, let me just zoom out and help minimize this to be able to help. Let's clean out this so you get the full thing. Now, to go over our following program, all right, God, let me just fix that. Train the network, and now going over. So first thing we usually do is that we import libraries, depending on what you want to do to be able to start. And we then assume we have a function to load our um, loan application data already. So typically we we'll just go in here uh, to be able to start. It could be a CSV file of whatever format that we have. But the point is we have the data and we need to com uh, convert it to numeric standards. And uh, depending on exactly between the features of what we want, so it could be credit score, it could be salary as well, the features would be set here, right in this area to be able to start prior to uh, uh, training, testing, and then doing the 80-20 split or 70-30 split as well. In this case, we're doing an 80-20 split. So features would be actually employed before we train or do the split. So I want to just clean this part up. So features would go here. We'll go here, depending on what we want. So X would be the features, and Y can determine the output for class classification. Yep, and after we did the split, we then normalize the feature data uh, using actually, we're we doing a feature range using the tan activation function right here. So we are able to recognize this by using the min max scalar to be able to scale the features that we have, and we use a feature range between negative one and one. And the model that we're going to be using is a sequential model. 
and this is where our layers are going to be located over here. We notice we have the input layer, hence this name here, and we have one hidden layer. Then we have an output layer as well, already set, so hidden, and output. Then after we have already trained within the uh, given layers, we then compile the model and we are applying a loss function of cross binary cross entropy with it looks like the optimizer is going to be used sigmoid uh, in this case as the algorithm. So we do a feature um, extraction of uh, using the tan hyperbolic tangent fun um, function to be able to actually have our features. And for the optimizer, we employ sigmoid and uh, we have metrics based on accuracy. We fit the model to our normalized training uh, data with 150 epochs, a batch size of 20 and a reverse of one. We evaluate the model's performance on the normalized uh, test data since we did a 20 split to be able to test for the accuracy and to uh, have an option. We can predict the loan approval outcomes and this will allow us to give us the probability of a loan being approved to be able to see exactly what would happen. So we would have a loan predictions call upon that to be able to have a model predict on the uh, normalized mm -hmm. testing in particular. So uh, we can just test to be able to see if a loan will be approved or not in that case and determine the financial uh, credentials and have more flexibility since we employ the hyperbolic tangent function right around over here, hence the ranges between the features that we would extract compared to uh, other activation functions as well. So that would just be in this context. So features are here but they would typically be over here and for further uh, understanding as well. But we are employing the hyperbolic tangent function. And so, yes, let me just zoom out of here so you folks can be able to get a better understanding and see further. All right, and so, yes, uh, this was our video lecture for our uh, topic of neural network structures Thank you again for taking time to watch this. If you found this video very helpful, uh, feel free and please do like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions as well, feel free to put it in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. And so, yeah, thank you very much for taking time to watch this. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to please like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put it in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.